Hello, Viking fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Viking Talk with Coach Josh Morgan. I'm Brandon Davis, and as always, glad to have with me Orange Central Head Football Coach Josh Morgan. Coach, good to see you. You too, Brad. Well, they don't come easy, do they, Coach? They do not. No, Coach Buddy Wooden told me one time that there's no such thing as an easy win, and I think he was right on that, but a very exciting and hard-fought 35-28 to victory last week over the Northwest Franken Cougars. Coach, give me your thoughts on that game. Well, Northwest is a, has a good football team, number one. Uh, and we knew that going in. And uh, very proud of our team's response uh, coming after a loss. Uh, very, very proud of our week that we had, uh, how we got ready to play. And, uh, you know, played four complete quarters. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, you know, really gutted out and uh, out slugged. Uh, a very good football team for a, a huge district win. Uh, that really, you know, sets us up in a nice spot. 28 points from the offense on Friday night, a much better game from your offensive line compared to the week before against Brandon Coach. So what did you and the coaching staff observe from that offensive line and the offense as a unit? I think, uh, you know, one of our big talking points of, of last week was, you know, running the football and, and really establishing the run and, um, you know, getting that going. And, and we were over 200 yards rushing, which was really big. You, you could tell how... Uh, much our our offense uh, is really clicks when we have the run game going, and uh, I thought our offensive line did well uh, for the most part. Uh, gotten better, uh, played well all night long, and and uh, uh, you know the consistency uh, of it. And I also think you know one of the big things about it is uh, pre-snap penalties, and we had we had zero. Uh, and and uh, anytime you can stay in front of the chains. Um, uh, you know, on, on task and, and uh, keeping your drives going in third down and manageable situations, it makes a huge difference for not only play calling but for executing. And uh, so you mix that in with backs running extremely hard. I thought they had their best night as well. Uh, and it was just a really nice, complete offensive game. Offensive line, people don't really think about this, Coach, but you got five out there that's got to act as one. It's not easy for all of them to come together. It usually takes time. What are your thoughts on that? I think we're getting better. Uh, and, and, again, I hope we continue that trend because we need to. Uh, it's very important that uh, we keep improving because uh, when the weather gets cold and, uh, you know, it, and, and it gets to be playoff time, and, you know, it's all about who can run the football and who can stop it uh, in meaningful football. And uh, that's what we're going to have to be really good at. It's what we're going to hang our hat on. So. Uh, we're going to go as far as they'll take us. So, uh, yes, uh, the cohesiveness and the togetherness up front and understanding how to get a push and leverage and where your help's coming from, but also, you know, whatever's thrown at you uh, defensive front-wise from different, different alignments and things like that. So anytime, um, the more experience that we get, uh, the better we're going to get at. I know that. Uh, we just got to get there in a hurry. Well, defensively, Coach, we scored another defensive touchdown. That's three in region play, very opportunistic defense, something that I know that you're proud of, the scooping and the scoring. That's, that's a huge for us. But we did struggle giving up over 240 yards on the ground, and, you know, we allowed them to stay in the game. It seemed like all night couldn't ever pull away from Northwest. You did talk about them being a very good football team. But talk about your defensive output on Friday night. I think uh, – I don't I, – I, I think uh, Northwest has one of the best offensive lines, if not the best that we we played, mm -hmm. number one. Uh, their whole left side, uh, we felt like and, and knew and was even more impressed with them after we played them and watched film. Uh, their left mm -hmm. tackle and left guard are two really good football players, uh, and I thought they made a difference. I thought their tailback ran extremely hard. Uh, and they're, they're, like I said, you know, we're proud of that win. And, uh, uh, they're, they're tough and, and, and did some good things. And uh, I thought our guys played good uh, after watching tape. I really thought uh, going into after the game, I felt like we didn't play very well. I thought, we, you know, watching tape was going to be, you know, disgusted. And, and it, it was not. You know, I think we busted in three or four uh, several situations, whether it was gap responsibility or, or not in the right spot. And they made us pay uh, in two of their longest runs and then on uh, two of their touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, it was more of us uh, busting uh, and not doing the right things and, and being in the right spots. And uh, that's really aggravating, uh, especially this deep into the season. And we've got to get that fixed and, and uh, in a hurry. I thought we tackled well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did. I think our missed tackles, I think we had five or six missed tackles. Uh, they were getting a push, a good push. Uh, uh, but again, I thought uh, 
and there were several instances where we, if we're doing the right things and in the right places, uh, a lot of that stuff is minimized. So that's uh, uh, something that's aggravating, and, and uh, we're anxious to get it fixed. We talked about a little bit last week some of the anxiety of getting back on the field, a big letdown of getting beat the way we did against Brandon, and both the coaching staff and the players anxious to get back on the field. Coach, we started this game, I thought, a little slow, a little sloppy, but you rebounded really well and came together. Talk about the mental toughness of this team, and you have to be proud of the way they rebounded. Yeah, you know, I told them, you know, Monday, one of our biggest things was our response. How, how do we respond? You know, uh, sometimes a loss can be really good for you, and, uh, and it can also be devastating to you. And it's really about how, as a group, as a collective group, we, we decide uh, how we want to respond, how willing are we to, uh, you know, look the man in the mirror and, and fix everybody, fix what needs to be fixed. And then I think we had a bunch of guys uh, anxious to do that. Uh, and it was very, you know, if we weren't mentally prepared and dialed in and locked in, we don't win that football game. And uh, they made us earn everything. Uh, and I thought it was a well-played football game on both, both sides. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was very proud uh, of, of us winning that football game because they're going to be, in my opinion, they'll probably be a playoff team in our, in our district. And uh, we got a head-to-head -head win over them. So uh, that win, uh, we're going to look at it down the road and, and, and really see how big this, this win was. Yeah, Coach Cooper and them doing a great job over there. That was a great game for us. This is Viking Talk visiting with Coach Josh Morgan. Coach, this week we travel over to face rival Pearl Pirates in a pivotal region game. What can you tell us about Coach Hunter's squad? Well, they they uh, typical Pearl, you know, physical, uh, tough, well coached, play hard. Uh, I think that uh, that they're young in some spots. That that uh, you know they lost a really big senior class right. last year. A lot of good football players. Uh, but uh, again, they're, they're a player or two away from really, uh, you know, winning two or three more ball games at least. And uh, so we, they have our undivided attention. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be hard to beat, and we're going to have to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. Uh, playing a young quarterback who's only getting better, he's going to be one that, uh, that you hear for a long time. Uh, coach's kid and, and uh, really knows the game, plays it the right way. Uh, big, big and physical. Uh, up front, several returning offensive linemen coming back, backs that run hard. Uh, so, again, you know, it's just a typical uh, district game and especially a typical Warren Central Pearl game. Yeah, you talked about that quarterback, a dual threat quarterback, a freshman quarterback at that, quarterback Jack Durr. He's thrown for over 1,000 yards this season. He's a, also has 12 total touchdowns, nine throwing, three running. So, Coach, what have you seen from this young man, and what type of threat does he pose to this defense? Well, usually when you're playing a ninth-grade quarterback, it's either two things. You know, it's either out of necessity or they're just that good. Uh, and uh, what we've seen is them throwing it more, them running him more, him making more plays. I'm not so sure he's not the best offensive player, and that's, that's uh, really staggering to say at this level of play at uh, such a young age. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, I think he's making a lot of plays. I, I, I know he's, he's, he's a tough-minded kid. Uh, you can tell that by watching him play. Uh, so, again, man, he, he puts a lot of pressure on you. Uh, he reminds me of the uh, quarterback Clinton had uh, two or three years ago when we played him twice in, in playoffs. Uh, a very good uh, dual-threat guy that's, that's just a winner. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full containing him. Well, they have over three receivers that have over 250 yards. One has over 300 yards. With our recent struggles that we've had with our pass defense, Coach, how important is it going to be for our defensive line to get pressure on that young quarterback and get him out of, uh, I guess, out of focus? Yeah, you know, you look at pass defense, everybody looks at the DBs automatically, and most time rightfully so. But, you know, as far as pass defense goes, your pass rush is your best asset. So uh, it's important that we get good pressure, collapse the pocket. Uh, and, you know, man, our DBs, we just need some confidence. Uh, right. We're all over the ball. We're, we're at the right places. Uh, we just, just need to keep battling there and, and uh, con continue to compete, uh, continue to run to the ball uh, and help in those aspects. Uh, but it's, it's definitely going to be uh, and very important that, that we're getting – uh, we're playing pass defense as 11 and, and not 7 and, uh, and using our good uh, pass rush and guys off the edges and find ways to bring pressure uh, to do that as a group instead of putting all that pressure on our corners and safeties. Right, should have Roy Qualls back this week. He was a big loss last week at the D-tackle spot, so they 
he should be some of the one that helps us with the surge up the middle. Yes, very, very, uh, very proud that we have Roy back. Uh, it's, it's noticeable when he's not on the field. Right. Uh, but again, we were able to survive uh, without him and, and uh, got some got some good uh, reps from my other guys that really stepped up. Thought Demarcus Jones played really good last. Yes, uh, you know, I thought we needed him to play well, and and he did. And uh, we we know what he can be. Uh, when he's on, and, and uh, this thing we keep pressuring him is, is being on all the time. And, and uh, so he, I thought him and JV and Allen did a really good job. But, yes, very excited to have Roy back. Well, something that's kind of a surprise to me, Coach, you look at Pearl's defense and region play. They're giving up 31 points a game, and that's really an anomaly. You don't really see that out of Pearl. Do you tie that to the youth of this defense? Because we talked about it. They lost a lot of key players on that defense. So do you tie it to the youth and the inexperience? How do you think that benefits us this Friday night? Well, you know, it's, uh, it, that can be deceiving. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those points uh, uh, come from different aspects, uh, whether it's a, um, scoring on defense or, or whatever. But I think that's got some to do with them personnel-wise. I think, the, you know, they're typically always been a four-man front. Now they're an odd. So I think they're trying to find their best 11 and, and, and trying to fit and trying to search. Uh, uh, for what's best for them. I also think it has a lot to do with our district. Uh, playing that kid from Meridian, right. uh, you know, he is a, uh, the heel kid from Meridian is going to be one of the, the, you know, top seniors next year. And uh, so again, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a little bit of all of that, but uh, uh, they're young in some spots. Uh, we can't overlook that. We have to be at our best uh, and, and uh, do what we're supposed to do and go where we're supposed to go. And, uh, be ready for their best because, to, to be honest with you, it really reminds me is, is if you flip both teams from last year, I think Pearl was 3-0 and coming into district, and we were 0-3. And, and we had to win this game to stay in the playoff pitcher. And, uh, you know, that's the mindset in this game right here is so very important. You know, we have to be ready. We have a great opportunity in front of us, but on the other side of that sideline is the team fighting for their lives. And, uh, you know, it's important that, that we understand that and that we approach it and have a mature uh, sense of uh, uh, a mindset that, that we, we're finna get their best shot and they're going to play at their best. They're going to play the hardest than they ever have played uh, simply because what's at stake in the playoff picture. So, uh, you know, a lot of that goes into this game. Yeah, excellent segue to something I was just about to talk about. So this game is very similar, almost eerie similar to what we faced last year, except you do reverse it. Last year we had to win. This year Pearl has to win. Pearl was top five in the state coming in, averaging over 40 points a game. They came in here and we shut them out three to nothing, a last second field goal by Brandon Gillum. They're coming into this game two and five record, but that's really misleading if you look at it, Coach. One and two in region play. They lost to Meridian. They lost kind of surprisingly last week to a very good Terry team, but they did beat Petal. So when you look at this, how have you emphasized to this team? Because you've got a bunch of young guys on your team as well. How have you emphasized to them this week that you cannot overlook this Pearl team because you know you're going to get their best shot? That's exactly right. And we've talked about it first thing Monday, you know, coming in and talking about it to make sure that we were all on the same page. First thing is we're not good enough to overlook anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we have to scrap and claw and, and be super disciplined in what we do to be successful. Uh, and there is no margin in there for overlooking or, or for any, any reason. So you know, kind of bringing them back down, refocusing them, but also understanding like, like, like there's a difference. And what, what the difference in last year was our guys were fighting for what I just talked about. And they, mm -hmm. they knew they had to win this game to keep them alive. And, uh, you know, it goes back to desire. It goes back to heart and what can be done when that heart's right and that desire is right. And uh, the intangibles of football and uh, the desire to win, the want to, who wants it the most, and then what are you willing to do to get that? Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a big game for us. We have a great opportunity in front of us, uh, but we have to play uh, like the hungry dog and, and not the fat and, and, and satisfied dog. So it's, it's super important that we understand that. And, and we've talked about it, and I think our team is understanding of it because it's a great reference of last year's football team. Right. Uh, so it, we know what that looks like. We know that position. And, uh, man, these district wins are hard to come by. And, and again, we have to be ready for Pearl's best, best game. Yeah, Pearl has probably the most difficult – See, uh, schedule to close out Warren Central tomorrow night. Then they play Northwest Rankin. Then they have Oak Grove and Brandon. So this is a must win for them if they want to try to get into the playoffs. Let's talk about us again. Sophomore running back Eric Collins, coach, thought he had a breakout game 
last Friday night against Northwest Rankin. He's averaging nine yards a carry. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Nine yards a carry. Should we expect to see more of this young man as we get deeper into region play? Yeah, when you break off 50-yard plus runs, that, that helps the <laughs> average out. And uh, so EJ does some incredible things as far as his burst. His vision has gotten really good. Uh, I can tell you I've been so pleased with him. Uh, him and Coach Cruz have a great relationship, our running back coach, and he's listening and he's trying to work on his craft and really develop his skills as a true running back. Um, the thing is, is with EJ is what we've got to do to get him on the field more. Uh, you know, EJ's got a, he's, he, the, the, the protections and, mm -hmm. and all that comes with it and the knowing and full understanding of the offense because what, what we do with our tailbacks is far more than just handing the football. And uh, so we're getting him up to that speed and we're getting to where we trust him in everything that we do. Uh, but, boy, he has surely taken – uh, the opportunities that he's, he's had and done really, really well for us. And, uh, you know, specifically in the Northwest game, what he did to change the game and those long runs. And it goes back to the Brandon game. I felt like we made no plays when it, we really needed them. And that was another challenge. Like, we got to make plays and we have to, you know, to make these explosive plays and the big time players make them. And that's the way it is. And, and we were able to do that. And he was a big part of that. And uh, he was able to do it for us in the Germantown game. Uh, and that's a, just a shot in the arm for our offense when you can make those kind of plays and we don't have to drive it all the way down the field and, and, and work so very hard for every yard. When you can make those long runs, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's really the difference in a good team and a great team. So uh, very pleased with him and very pleased of the, him maturing and learning. And uh, I'm glad he's, glad he's on our team. Yeah, so much youth that we've had this year and, and key spots. You think of the two ends, uh, LJ and, and then Ronnie on the defensive side, defensive end. And then uh, we just had numerous sophomores, yeah. Coach, seemed like it stepped up this year, something we haven't seen in the past that's really made this team special. So exciting future for us here at Warren Central with that's these right. guys. How do we look on injuries? I know this time of the year, bumps and bruises, everybody's sore, everybody's hurting. But how do you look on injuries, and will you be missing anyone this you week? You know, we've, we've, we've got some guys that, are, that have some bumps and bruises, but nothing major uh, as far as for them to miss any time, which is uh, we're very proud of that and thankful for that. Our guys have done a good job of, of, of taking care of it and rehabbing the right way, but, you know, not missing. And uh, it's, it's important, and uh, that's another reason, you know, that we're having the success that we're having is because we've got all hands on deck and uh, – Got a, got a tough football team, and we've also been very blessed, uh, very thankful for uh, our health. So we, we've got we've got all our guys. Well, you said you got them back at practice on uh, Monday and got them refocused. But how do they look in practice this week? We've had a good week. Uh, we've had a good week preparation week. Just we've kind of gotten into the routine where they know what to expect and how to prepare and how to come to work. And uh, and that's what you know really those those days are. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays are just work days. It's just no difference than. Uh, you know, grabbing your lunch pail and going to work. It's just uh, understanding that it is, uh, you know, the way we've treated around here is, is uh, as a business. I mean, we, we, we're about business and we're about film study. And, it's, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you, don't, you don't come in here and, and not be prepared to prepare. And uh, so we, we, they understand that. And, of course, the older guys know what that's about. But, you know, getting those younger guys training of how to prepare yourself and, and – uh, and getting locked in, and, and uh, so another good week of that. So what are the keys to beating this uh, good Pearl Pirate team, Coach? Well, you know, the, to me the big thing right here is, is, is for us, again, uh, offensively to, 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 to you know, if, if we can mirror uh, the productivity that we had in the Northwest game uh, as far as, and I'm not talking about necessarily stats, but uh, consistently. I, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, we had the ball. Uh, against Northwest, we had the ball the last 15 minutes. In winning time, we had it 12 and a half minutes. Right. We had 16 play drives. We converted on third downs, went for it twice on fourth downs. Uh, you know, th th that does so much for your football team. And it also demoralizes the other team. I mean, it's tough. And uh, uh, so that's what we want to look like. That's what we want to be. Uh, feel like we can be successful uh, winning a championship with that kind of approach. I thought we, we made some plays also in the passing game. So, uh, we want to see that consistency. Was that a one-hit wonder? Was that, is that, all, that the best we are? Or can we improve on that and, and, and uh, really take that and go with it? Uh, so we want to keep moving forward offensively. Uh, defensively, it's about the big play. You mentioned their wide receivers, their quarterbacks. That's an area. 
you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that we've been exploited in in some really big games, Brandon and Oak Grove in particular, uh, that we need to see ourselves get better at and compete at. Uh, and I think the big thing here is turnovers. I feel like if we can be good with the ball, which we've been fortunate enough to uh, win the turnover battle, uh, to be strong there in that area. So again, consistency from the offense, uh, big plays, defense, and the turnover margins is, is going to be very important. Well, Coach, best of luck to you. It should Thank be you. a fun game tomorrow night. Hope so. So you've been involved with a lot of Pearl games. Do you have one that stands out to you the most playing, coaching? Well, you know, we've had some, some, some great games with Pearl and, and, and some battles going back. You know, we used to always play them first game of the year back mm -hmm. in the day. It was the first game. It was Pearl. And, and uh, of course, their old uh, little Dixie rival. Uh, I think the one that sticks out to me is the, the, the most recent was uh, the 45-42 to 42 game. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah. It was the Joe Shorters and Jesse's. Right, right. We broke out everything that we had. Uh, Coach Rob had called the Georgia pass, the uh, double reverse pass, and back and forth out here on, on, on Highway 27. And uh, it was just one of those, just neither team was, just, just was, was, was uh, willing to give up. And uh, we pulled it out the very end. And just typical two teams that are going to fight you tooth and nail. And uh, a lot of like each other. Programs are a lot alike. And, and uh, this, this is never, uh, very seldom is this game uh, not interesting yeah. and not come down to the wire. And that's what we're expecting uh, again. Yeah, you're right about that. Two teams that they don't get a lot of respect, but they are the lunch pail type programs. They just get up and go to work and do their job. And, and, and if you don't know much about Pearl Warren Central, this is probably one of the lesser talked about rivals in the state, but it is always a dandy of a ball game. And we expect to have a good one here tomorrow night over at Pearl and a very important game for us. Warren Central, it puts us in the driver's seat in our playoff standing, currently setting in second in region play. Pearl, they have to have this game in order to advance or have an opportunity to advance, so it's going to be a great one. Well, next week we will come back here. We will talk about this Pearl game, and then we're going to focus on homecoming 2022. I know you love homecoming 2022 love and it. all the distractions that come with it. <laughs> I'll say that. You don't have to, but we'll be facing the Terry Bulldogs. We'll talk about that next week. Hope you join us tomorrow night over at Ray Rogers Stadium in Pearl. Should be a dandy of a ball game. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the show. I'm Brandon Davis. He's Josh Morgan. We'll see you next week. Until then, rise up, Vikings.